the trends tab of analytics is very helpful for well uh, viewing trends trends is in like where you're improving which is great for confidence and also uh, where you where you need to focus your studies on like as in where you're weak right where you need to shore up your weaknesses and uh, maybe not miss as many questions so we're looking at a model seven stagers analytics my data is full of garbage so uh, this one's very helpful uh, let's take a look here the first thing you have to do is decide which prep test you want to look at uh, we have up here a couple of default selections um, but here let's look at just uh, from 68 to 74 so you see those are the ones that i've selected and you just click limit to these prep tests and you'll see the analytics data pop up for uh, just those prep tests all right so what's going on here well you see two lines here blue line black line black line is your actual lsas score the blue line is your uh, blind review score you notice uh, uh first criticism here is she didn't input blind review scores for 69 for 72 for 73 that's why they're exactly the same because you just did input uh so that's bad you, you always want to input your blind resources so that so that you have actually a line here right now, why, what is the blind review line? Why is it important? Be the blind review line is important because it's your theoretical maximum score. Like if you want to ask yourself, hmm, how much more can I improve by? Well, the answer is right here by your blind review score. Whatever your th blind review score is, that's your theoretical maximum. Because, I mean, if you think about it, the blind review process, assuming you're doing it right, it's, you're, it's just taking timing out of the equation, right? Like like with unlimited time, how, how well can you do? So you definitely want to make sure you uh, input your blind review score the space, right, the space here between blind review and actual review, that margin is called the margin for improvement, right? So here down here, you see some summary st statistics for all of the uh, six prep tests averaged together. Uh, this number is pretty important. Uh, if you're inputting the data for uh, your most recent prep tests, and assuming you did them under the correct timing conditions, plus or minus three points of this average is what you're going to get on your actual test, right, on your actual real LSAT, likely minus three points. Uh, because people typically suffer uh, from what's called the quote-unquote test day penalty. Uh, anyway, so now down here, uh, statistics for each of prep tests listed. Down here, this section is really great for t uh, helping you target. Um, it, you know, everyone has limited time. You need to prioritize what you want to study on. So for her, what's her priority? Well, it's logical reasoning uh, because there are two sections, and she's missing 3.3, which means she's missing on average per prep test 6.6 .6, uh, raw raw score points on logical reasoning so definitely target logical reasoning if you just click logical reasoning you can just make the others go away and you notice i don't know if you noticed that but this is this made it appear so let's try that again so you click logic games you see logic games appear and you're just looking at the logic games line uh you can view them depending on how you want to view them uh you can view them differently but um yeah, you can just x out of this to see uh the, all, all the sections now moving down further this question type analysis is uh, really, really great for just helping you figure out within, say, logical reasoning, right? Within logical reasoning, what you need to be focused on. She clearly needs to focus on flaw. So for, for you guys, you just look at the circles, the size of the circle or the uh, darkness indicates the uh, priority. And the way we figure out priority is by a combination of how frequently the question type appears plus how terrible you are at them, right? So let's say must be false. Let's say you're terrible and must be false, but there's actually just like one question of uh, must be false per outside. So that's not a very high priority, but flaw. See, not only are you not great at flaws, but there are lots of flaw questions. So that's why it's highlighted big here. Uh, down here, this table, you can sort by a bunch of things. You know, here we can just sort by priorities. So you can see her, for her, flaw is the highest priority. Weaken is the second highest priority. You can sort by, say, number of questions, uh, a number of questions that you can expect to see, right? This is the actual number of questions for the six prep tests you chose. This is the uh, uh, number expected per prep test. So here's 7.7 7, 7. 7 flaw questions per LSAT, right? 5.1 uh, necessary assumptions per LSAT. And your accuracy compared to others, um, which is, by the way, how we determine the, uh, determine the priority. So if you click flaw, right, let's just click this button. So that's going to automatically take you over to the question table tab here. It's limited to the prep test that we previously selected. And it's remember, you clicked on the flaw button. So now it's sorting for just the flaw questions. And as you can see, it's just a long list of all the flaw questions from those prep tests. So what can you do with this? Well, what I like to do with students is I like to sort by question difficulty and just go through them, right? Just go th through them again, assuming it's been a while since you've done these prep tests. Over on this column is the quick view feature again. So you can just click it to bring up the uh, actual question itself. So hopefully that gives you some idea of what you can do with analytics. It's a very powerful tool, so I highly encourage you to uh, explore and use it.